consider the following formula. Which of the following statements is true for this formula? The first thing you probably thought to try was finding your x and y intercepts. Let's say we found our x-intercept first, where y is equal to 0. We would rewrite our expression, and instead of y, we would plug in 0. And then immediately we would see a problem. Right? We cannot divide by 0, so that means our intercepts in this problem are undefined. And what we're used to in problems like this are very defined intercepts, where we can say if this is the x-intercept, then all of these values have a positive y, and all of these values have a negative y, right? or vice versa. Everything greater than our intercept has positive y, everything less than our intercept has negative y. It's very easy to define what's positive and what's negative. But in this case, where our intercepts are undefined, um, it can be very, very tricky to identify when x and y are negative, but there is still a way to do it. What you need to consider is for this range of y, does that range cover every possible positive value of x? And I'll show you what I mean. When x is positive, y is greater than 1. Let's try some numbers that are greater than 1. x equals 1 over 1. A number that's greater than 1 would be 2. So I'll plug in 2 for y. 1 over 2. That is a positive x value. Let's try another one x equals 1 over, how about 3? 3 is greater than 1, and that would create another positive value for x. But are there any values outside of this range that would also create a positive value for x? Let's try some values that are less than 1. x equals 1 over 1 half. That's less than 1. Anytime we are dividing with fractions, remember we're multiplying by a reciprocal. Keep your first fraction change from division to multiplication, and then flip your fraction. So now we have x is equal to 1 times 2, which is just 2. That is also a positive value for x that we would have missed if we would have stayed in this range. So that means that y is greater than 1 does not cover all the positive value for x, and that makes it incorrect. Now let's take a look at answer choice b. When x is positive, y is less than 1. Well, we already know that this isn't true, because for answer choice A, we had to try some numbers that were greater than 1, and we did get some positive x results, right? When we plugged in 3 for y, we got a positive x result, and that was greater than 1. So B does not cover all of the positive values of x, and therefore it is incorrect. Let's look at answer choice C. When x is negative, y is greater than 1. For this one, let's rearrange our equation to look at it in a different way. x equals 1 over y. Let's do opposite operations. We'll multiply both sides by y. These will cancel, giving us x times y equals 1. This shows us a bit more clearly that these two numbers, x and y, have to have the same sign because the result is positive. Whenever you're multiplying two numbers, same sign yields a positive result, and different signs yield a negative result. So x and y have to both be positive or both be negative in order for the function to stay true. So over here, when x is negative, y is greater than 1, all of the values of y that are greater than 1 are all positive. So there is no value of y in this range, that makes a negative x value. Therefore, c is incorrect. By process of elimination, that leaves us with answer choice d as our correct answer. But let me show you why it is correct. When x is negative, y is less than negative 1. Again, does this range cover all of the possible negative values of x? And the answer is yes, it does. If we were to plot this on a number line, We'd have 0 right here, we'd have 1 right here, and we plot our line in this range, this tiny range right here between 0 and 1. Yes, we would have positive y values, and thus we would have positive x values. But that does not make the statement incorrect, because once we pass 0, and we are in this range out into negative infinity over here, then we are covering all of the possible negative x values that exist in this function, because we are covering all of the negative y values that exist in this function. And therefore, d is our correct answer.